Each year, a student commencement speaker is chosen from our graduating class. This year's speaker is a remarkable young man who fully embodies the terp entrepreneurship spirit of the University of Maryland. Jonathan Chen is graduating today with a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science. On Monday, he'll begin working full-time for Fiscal Note, a company he co-founded while a student here with two friends from high school. Jonathan and his colleagues developed a software platform that aggregates and analyzes government legislation and predicts the passage of bills in all 50 states and in Congress. The company raised $1.2 million in funding last fall, including an investment from Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban, and they recently opened an office which employs 17 people in the D.C. area. It's with great honor that I introduce to you Mr. Jonathan Chen. Thank you, Dr. Infantino, for those wonderful words. I couldn't have gotten here today without the continuous support from my friends and family. I love you guys. Also, I want to give a shout out to Brandy and Savannah from the CS department for, for always being there for me for the last couple of years. And lastly, I want to give a shout out to everyone at the Fiscal Note office in DC. They're working super, super hard while I'm here giving this speech. <laughs> but enough about me, because today is about you. So let's take, a, let's take a second and congratulate the class of 2014. <laughs> so before I begin, after seeing the main commencement yesterday, and after seeing President Lowe and Governor O'Malley take a selfie, I was thinking to myself, um, how often do you get to take a, sel a selfie while giving a graduation speech? So I was wondering, if you, I mean, if you guys don't mind, um, if I can take a selfie right now. <laughs> right. This will only take a second. enough distractions. So if it isn't obvious by now, today is a very important day. For some of us, it's a day we've been dreading because the thought of leaving behind what has been our home for the last couple years is daunting. But for others, it's a day we've been waiting for ever since kindergarten. Because honestly, homework sucks. Graduating from college is a huge milestone. When you think about it, school has taken over 17 plus years of our lives. And I feel sorry for the PhDs, it's like 25 years. <laughs> and throughout those years, we have grown and matured into fine young adults. But the thing I think most people lose on the path to adulthood is a confidence in one's own creativity. If you give children a bunch of crayons and a piece of paper, their imaginations run wild as they create what they believe is the next masterpiece. Children ignore the criticism of others and draw whatever they want. I think we are most creative when we are younger, when we are younger because we don't know our limits and we don't give up, I mean, we don't, we don't care about what other we don't care about what others think. Therefore, as kids, we think we can do the impossible. And we still can. Everyone is innately creative, but most of us are afraid to show it. Because we fear the judgment of others, because we fear the judgment of others. And additionally, we give up too easily because others who are better and more experienced than us 
have failed before. My freshman year, I was afraid that people thought my ideas weren't as, as good as I thought they were. And um, some of these ideas were had, some of the ideas that I had, I thought, you know, they were impossible to pursue given my lack of experience. However, I quickly decided not to let the opinions of others and the difficulty of the problem hinder my creativity. This led me to start my company, Fiscal Note, which aggregates government legislation across all 50 states and uses artificial intelligence to analyze that information in real time. No, I don't have a PhD in machine learning, although it would have been a lot easier to start this company if I did. So this brings me to my first message. Don't be afraid to be creative and tackle the impossible, even if you think you aren't good enough. Looking back at our grade school days, the tool that sparked a lot of youth, youthful creativity came in the form of a simple crayon. Indeed, as corny as it sounds, I'm about to compare our lives to a bunch of crayons. When you think about it, everything we do, we leave behind a mark, a memory that can never be erased. Every important moment in our lives is just a canvas on which we leave a little part of us behind. Marilyn is one such canvas. Every single one of us has our own unique color that reflects who we are. No one is the same. But if you work and color and play together, the image is breathtaking compared to what could have been achieved alone. Again, each of us represents one color, but together, we are all part of a bigger picture. Together, there is no such thing as impossible. Only endless masterpieces waiting to be drawn. Which brings me to my second message. Working together, you can accomplish more than you could have ever done alone. My company, Fiscono, couldn't have gotten to where it is today without all the amazing people in it working as a team. As we depart from the University of Maryland and enter the workforce or pursue a higher level of education, I encourage everyone to find something you love to do. I know, sounds cliche, but you know, what's a graduation speech without something cliche? I'll tell you a secret. I'm not that smart. I'm sure the majority of you are much brighter, more brilliant than I am. I'm not valedictorian, nor am I a straight A student. I didn't even make Latin honors. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Instead, I focus my attention towards something I am passionate about. Blindly working hard towards a goal that you're not passionate about is not the way to go. Eventually, you'll break. When I was in Silicon Valley last summer, my team and I worked 12 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week, but you know what? It didn't feel like work. It didn't feel like work because we were working on something that we truly believed in. And it was fun. And occasionally we went to San Francisco and had some memorable nights, but I won't go into that in detail. <laughs> but it's this type of hard work that you need to commit to in order to get an investment from someone like Mark Cuban. Find something you need to, I mean, find something you love to do and work hard. But don't forget to play hard. But sadly, in our generation, in this generation, sometimes it's not enough to work harder or work smarter. You must work more creatively and work as a team. That, my friends, is how innovation is born. Working with others who share the same passion as you will make everything you do much more enjoyable. And as you bounce around ideas and share your experiences with those people, you are more likely to spark innovation or make groundbreaking discoveries. Luckily, you all have an advantage. Look to your right, to your left, behind you, in front of you. You all, you all are sitting here today with people who share the same passion as you. 
And I bet most of those people are your friends. And if not, you should meet them today and you know, connect with them on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. But don't be afraid to call each other up and work together in the future. Who knows where those projects might take you someday. I started Fiscano with friends from middle school, and it, it has been the most enjoyable experience of my life. And hopefully, we can take our company public one day. I wish all of you the best of luck as you start your, your new lives as real adults. But don't forget this. We are Maryland Terps. And we represent the School of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences, aka the best college in Maryland. <laughs> I believe that if there's any group of people that will introduce the next cutting edge technology or make the next groundbreaking scientific discovery, it's the computer scientists, the mathematicians the physicists, the chemists, the biologists, the biochemists, the environmental scientists, the geologists, the astronomers, and oceanographers sitting right here in this room. I hope I didn't forget any of you. <laughs> History has shown us that it has always been we who have pushed humanity forward. Forget the engineering school. <laughs> Innovation and discovery start with us. Congratulations again, class of 2014. This concludes my long and boring speech. It is time, fellow Terps, to finally, finally come out of our shells. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. Thank you for your time, and good luck. Go Turks! Thank you, Jonathan. Yes, it's all of you who actually make our college the best in Maryland. Congratulations. Jonathan, uh, is your family here? Yes, over there. Would you please wave? I'm sure your family is proud of you, Jonathan, as we all, we all are, and I would like to present you with a small token of our appreciation.